At GreenPath, our mission is to empower people to lead financially healthy lives. We're a national nonprofit focused on financial health for everyone. We have an incredible team here at GreenPath. Our team is courageous, they are creative, and they're really empathetic. They, they really care about what we do and they care about the people we serve. Whatever you dream about accomplishing in your life, and whatever your financial situation may be, we are always here and happy to assist you. You are not alone. We are here for you, and it all starts with a conversation. Hello, and welcome to the financial transformation you've been waiting for, presented by Green Path Financial Wellness and Real Times Media. I'm Mark Hayes, National News Director for Real Times Media, and we are so excited to bring you America's favorite personal financial educator, the budget nista, Tiffany Alishe. She's going to be here to help you, as her new book suggests, get good with money. Now, we've got an informative, life-changing discussion planned for you this evening, and we're going to have a little bit of fun, too. So throughout the night, you're going to have a couple of chances to win a free copy of Tiffany's new, new book. So stick around with us until the very end. Your first chance to win is coming up. Also, we want you to visit our virtual photo booth by clicking on the link that's pinned in the chat and let us see your smiling faces. Then please share those pictures on your social media accounts, your Facebook, your IG your Twitter and tag at GreenPath with the hashtag, hashtag get transformed. Now we're going to randomly select winners from the post to receive their own copy of the Budget Nista's new book, Get Good With Money. So say cheese for your big chance to win. Now, before we dive into our discussion, I want to take a moment to thank our partners at Green Path Financial Wellness for helping us bring you today's really important event. Green Path Financial Wellness is one of the largest national nonprofit financial counseling agencies with local offices around the country ready to help people work through financial challenges. From credit and debt management to student loans to housing services, Green Path is ready to help you put your financial plan into action. And all you have to do is visit their website at www.greenpath.org or call 1-800-550-1961 to get more information. Once again, thank you so much to our partner, Green Path. Now, we want to get greetings on behalf of Real Times Media. Please welcome our Chief Executive Officer, Hiram E. Jackson. Good evening. I'm Hiram Jackson, CEO of Real Times Media. And thank you all for joining us for this transformative discussion tonight. You know, often in our community, we're afraid to talk about money and the financial challenges that so many of us face. Tonight is our first step in hopefully changing that. We've got to know our numbers. We must set goals and we must make a financial plan that not only ensures our personal financial wellness, but really sets up the next generation for success as well. You know, the great news is that you don't have to do it alone. With resources available like the Budgetista and our friends at Green Path, there are people who really want to help you figure it out. But don't take my word for it. You'll hear much more from the Budgetista later. But right now, it is my distinct pleasure in introducing Ms. Kristen Holt, CEO of Green Path. She's going to share with you this information firsthand. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Kristen Holt, President and CEO of Green Path Financial Wellness. We're a national nonprofit celebrating this year 60 years of helping people build their financial health and resiliency. We're glad you've joined us tonight for a conversation that promises to be engaging and transformative. We all know the importance of our physical health, getting regular checkups for instance, but what about financial health and wellness? Whether it's making a simple spending plan, managing credit and debt, student loan balances, increasing savings, or keeping up with housing expenses, having an action plan from a trusted resource can put us on the path to improving our financial health. Last year, our certified counselors helped more than 61,000 households 
pay off more than $256 million of debt through our debt management program. We are so pleased to team with the Budget Nista, who shares with GreenPath a passion for delivering financial education and guidance that is truly transformational. We invite you to join the conversation this evening as we put our focus on the financial transformation you've been waiting for. Visit our website, www.greenpath.org, to take our three-minute financial assessment. It's a starting point so you can know where you're at and begin your financial transformation tonight. Thank you. Noah had just been born and I remember sitting in my living room, you know, with this major life change and it just came to me one day, I was thinking that I lived in an apartment at the time and he was in his crib and I just remember thinking I want my son to have his own yard, to grow up with his own yard to play in. So like in that instant for me buying a home became the most important thing in the world. As I started to research what it takes to buy a home and the places I would want to live, I had the painful at the time self-realization that I carried a lot of debt. I didn't have a budget, money came in, I spent it. I didn't want to live like that anymore. The engagement with the Green Path Debt Counselor, it was genuine. I feel like I was being set up for continued success. It wasn't like, you know, after finishing this debt management program, I felt like I was equipped with the tools and the knowledge to not end up back here again in 10 years. This is a bigger picture. This isn't about the bills that are due at the end of the month. This is about creating a lifestyle. This is about, you know, creating opportunities for us. One of the things I appreciate is, um, how she's taught me all of these things and how I know them because of her. I appreciate how she's always like pushed me to do better and have me believe in myself. It makes me feel like that um, not only do I not have to make the same like mistakes, but I feel like I have to do like more with my finances in the future because I've been set up through all of these things that she talked about to do more. And that's another reason why it is so important that I, for me to equip Noah with understanding that you know, I need you to be thinking about the well-being of your children. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, this is bigger than us. You know, this is about, you know, collective progress. Wow, what a powerful story, and so many of us can relate. Thank you so much, Tanisha, for sharing. And thank you to the good folks at Green Path and Kristen Holt for helping transform people's lives by transforming their finances. And now let's have a little bit of fun. Here's your next chance to win a copy of Get Good With Money, participating in our own version of the Name That Tune game, The Money Edition. So let's take a look at the rules. The rules are pretty simple now. We're gonna make it easy for you. We're gonna play the first few seconds of some popular tracks about money, money, money. And after the song is played, you get 20 seconds max, 20 seconds max, the clock is ticking, to type into the chat the correct artist's name and title of the song. We need them both, artist and title. Now the winners who give us the correct answers in the chat will be randomly se selected and notified via comment reply and will receive instructions on how to redeem your prize. All right, let's get started. Time to play Name That Tune. Here's round one. I grew up on the crime side, the New York Times side. Staying alive was no job. All right, all right. Who's got the answer? Who's got the answer? Type it into the chat. We'll give you a little bit more time. That was a popular song. That one goes back a little bit. That's what us old folks call old school. <laughs> wow, I'm really dating myself. These young folks on the call, I'm sure they have absolutely no idea what that song is. <laughs> all right, all right. There is your 20 seconds. There it is. Cream, cash rules everything around me by the Wu-Tang Clan, AKA they are old school. Yes, indeed. All right, we're gonna select the winner and move on to round number two. Hit it. Ooh. 
That's an easy one. I can name that tune in three notes. <laughs> and that's what you folks need to do. We just gave you a taste of that one. That one should be really, really easy. The question is, how fast can you type? How fast can you get it into the chat? Remember, we need the artist and the title of the song. You got to get them both in order to get your prize. Yes, indeed. The OJs, one of my favorites, For the Love of Money. That was a good one. That might have been a tough one, too. That's that's definitely old school. All right. We're going to move on to round number three. We've got another famous money, money, money song. DJ, hit it. Dasha Pay Bills. Oh, oh, just a tease right there. Nothing but a tease right there. But uh, that is uh, the most successful uh, female artist group in the history of music, I want to say. Matter of fact, they came out um, with a uh, behind the music episode on VH1 that captivated a nation. I know everybody saw that. Or it's, maybe it's just me. I watch a lot of TV. I really do need to get busier. <laughs> bills, bills, bills by Destiny's Child. Yes, indeed. A lot of folks didn't know that Destiny's Child was was once a group and Beyonce was part of that group, but that's a, another conversation. All right, let's move on to the next round and find our next lucky winner. Round number four. Hit it, DJ. Wow. Who doesn't love to hear that song? Who doesn't love that one? That day of the week? <laughs> it's a Friday night. Everybody's working toward Friday. Remember, we need the artist and the title of the song. You got to have both in order to win. Remember, Up for Grabs is Get Good with Money, Tiffany's brand new book. So we want you to get that book. We want you to get on your way to financial freedom. And there is the answer. Just got paid by Johnny Kemp. And thanks so much for playing, folks. There were some tough ones in there. And congratulations to all our winners. Oh, we got round five. One more round. Let's do it. Let's do it, DJ. All right. I know a lot of you folks know that one. Be careful now because um, that one's got some explicit lyrics in it. I'm glad we're just playing a, a little bit of it. <laughs> But remember, you've got to get the artist and the title right. See, I know a lot of people put Biggie in there, but it's Junior Mafia. Get money. Right. That was a big hit back in the day. Another old school joint. All right. I like it. I like the musical selections tonight. But they all have to do with money. And congrats to all our winners. And once again, thank you to Green Path and the Budget Nista, Tiffany Alicia, for providing uh, copies of her book for all our winners this evening. That book, obviously, when we heard the uh, personal testimonial just a moment ago, so, so valuable. And uh, there were some tough ones in there. So congrats to all the winners. And now we want to bring on uh, Donna to introduce, to make some uh, remarks and introduce our budget Nista. It's the reason why we're here tonight. We want to get our minds right, get our notebooks ready, get your questions on deck. Your financial transformation begins right now. And here to formally bring the budget Nista to our virtual stage is Donna Dolman Dickerson, the Chief Marketing Officer at Green Path. Hi, everybody. I'm Donna Dolman Dickerson, Chief Marketing Officer at Greenpath Financial Wellness. I've followed our guest speaker for several years and appreciate the practical advice she offers. You know, more than 10 years ago, before I even knew about Greenpath or Tiffany, I had to overcome personal loss and rebuild my life and my family and find my path towards financial wellness. These setbacks aren't planned, they're often out of our control and they can happen to anyone. So tonight, Tiffany's likely gonna share her story, and it's gonna include setbacks. And what I can tell you is her story is powerful and it's authentic. Sometimes it's that ability to tell your story that's the beginning of your path forward. And sometimes you just need a real story for inspiration. 
Now in my role at GreenPath, I'm committed to creating awareness of the vital work that GreenPath and Tiffany do every day. And I'm fired up and on this mission to help people achieve their own financial transformation. So let's get ready to have an important conversation with the Budget Nista. Tiffany, the Budget Nista, Alice, is America's favorite personal financial educator. A New York Times bestselling author, Get Good With Money, NAACP Image Award nominee, and the first black woman to grace the cover of Money Magazine solo. Tiffany is a trailblazer in the personal finance space. Her monumental Live Richer movement has helped over one million women worldwide save, help them manage and pay off hundreds of millions of dollars. As a former teacher for 10 years with a master's degree in education, Tiffany was instrumental in getting the budget NISTA law passed in January of 2019, making financial education mandatory for all middle school students in the state of New Jersey. She's done so much more, and I'm just gonna let her tell you about it. Please welcome Tiffany Alice, the budget NISTA. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much, Green Path. I hope we're going to have a fun-filled uh, next half an hour. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get good with money together. Okay. All right. So I am Tiffany, the budgetista. Hopefully, um, your favorite financial educator. And today we're going to go over, I don't know if we'll get to all 10, we'll get to as many as we can, simple steps of about becoming financially whole. So first let's get clear on what is financial wholeness. So I'm sure you've heard of financial freedom, having enough money, not having to work anymore. Well, financial wholeness is when these 10 components of your financial life come together to create the foundation you need to achieve the rest of your financial goals. So think of financial wholeness as your foundation and financial freedom as the aspiration. Financial freedom is something that maybe not everyone will achieve, but financial wholeness is something that certainly everyone can achieve. So before we start, let's start with a quick four-step budget. Feel free to take screenshots of anything that you see. Feel free to um, to share and tag me at the budgetista um, if I you know say something that sizzles in your spirit. All right, the four step budget process. So list one, step one when you're creating a budget is list everything you spend money on. Step two, write down what you spend each month. This is called your money list on each item on your list. Step three, add up the expenses, and step four, subtract what you spend a month from what you take home each month. This is just a basic budget. And people ask me all the time, like, you know, you can literally do this in like 10, 15 minutes. This is just a basic four part budget. Now here's the bonus. And this is how I was able to get my husband to budget with that budgeting. I call it the split it before you get it model. So once your money is you, you, you already know, you know, what you're, what you're spending each month and, what you're um, making each month and you're clear on that, then I want you to think about splitting your money into four buckets. Bucket one is your checking account. This is where your money is going to land largely, but also too, this is really your spending account. It's attached to your credit card or attached to your checking account that has the debit card. Checking account number two is your bills account. This is a checking account that you're going to ask actually request that you have no debit card because you don't want to be swiping your bill money away on that debit card. Savings one. Savings to me has two functions, one for emergency, one for goals. So savings one, this is where you're going to save for emergencies. You want to have at least three months or depending on what your industry dictates of how long it would take you to replace your income. And then savings two, this is where you're going to want to have your um, your 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 goal saving. So maybe you wanted to purchase a house, which obviously we all know that Green Path can help you with. Maybe you're wanting to purchase a car. Maybe you're wanting to save for school. Maybe you're wanting to save to start investing. So you're going to ask HR or payroll 
if they can split it before you get it. Now, not every payroll department will allow this, but many will, meaning you're going to ask them based upon your budget every time you get paid to send stuff to your spending account, your bills account, your emergency savings and your in your goal savings. That way you can budget without budgeting. You can literally have your job budget for you. Let's just say they will only let you split. They won't let you split at all. When all of that can land in that first checking account and you can have that checking account transfer to the others. So split it before you get it is one of the greatest ways that you can start budgeting now. So let's get good with money. So First things first, when you're thinking about getting good with money, we want to work on our mindset, especially our money mindset. And some things to consider is something that I like to call every financial choice matters. So my first financial choice that I made, I was about six years old and I really loved ice cream like so many kids, but I also loved running water. I used to turn on the water in the bathroom, in the kitchen, and I loved the sound of running water. And my parents were trying to figure out how to get six-year-old Tiffany to stop. They had a brilliant plan because we didn't have a ton of money. So we used to rotate, my sisters and I would rotate what we call ice cream day. That meant once a week when the ice cream man came, it was your turn to ask for a dollar to go get ice cream. And the rest of the sisters had to go in and get ice cream from the freezer. So the day that it was my turn to ask for ice cream, my father said, ah, you know how you were running the water this morning? And I said, yes. He said, well, Every time you run water, the water man must be paid. I didn't have money on me, so I gave him your ice cream day dollar. I, of course, had a nervous breakdown and started crying. But guess who never ran that water again? I share that story because six-year-old Tiffany had to learn what was more important to me, running water or ice cream. And I decided that I wanted ice cream more than I wanted to run that water. So for you... We have to oftentimes understand that your financial choices matter. Are you choosing water over ice cream or ice cream over water? The choice really is yours. There's no right or wrong choice, but you should be actively making financial choices and choosing your money mindset. Because remember, where your mindset goes, so does your money. Another mindset thing to keep in mind is um, need it, love it, like it, want it. These are the four questions you ask yourself um, these are the priority questions you ask yourself before you spend any money. If you've ever seen me wear a, a, a wrist full of bracelets, that's what it says. Need it, love it, like it, want it. Needs come first. Can you guys tell me some of the, some needs? Let me know in the comments. Needs like food, shelter, clothing to be covered, not to be cute, water. Think of a need as this. If I don't have this thing, I will not be healthy. I will not be safe. So needs are necessities in order to be healthy and safe. Then second most important are your loves. Sometimes people have a hard time identifying loves or they skip over loves because they seem to be more expensive. But loves make life enjoyable. I want you to think about this. Okay, if you had, say, Oprah's bank account, what would you do or what would you do more of? Let me know in the comments. What would you do or what would you do more of? The number one thing people always say is travel. Okay, especially when outside is open. So travel. I want you to think of your loves as this. This is like a little um, cheat sheet to figure out if something is a love. You know it's a love if you're pretty sure a year from now, it still will bring you joy. Like I love to travel and I can tell you the time, my first time I went to Santorini, Greece, it was so beautiful. I've been to Istanbul, Costa Rica, Panama, Nigeria. I've been to London. I've been to Paris. I've been to Monaco. I've been to Morocco. I've been to, to um, Jaipur, India. I've been to Mumbai, India. And so those things, even though it happened years ago, still bring me joy. So your love will bring you joy a year plus from now. That's how you know it's a love. A like will bring you joy about three to six months from now. You'll still feel some residual joy, but not past the year. So likes are temporary joy. Loves are lasting joy right? So for example, you, for me, a like might be like, I'm not really a big foodie. I'm greedy, but not really a big foodie. So like, I might have a really great dinner with my husband. And so hanging out with him was awesome, but the food I'm not going to remember a few months from now. So that might be a like and a want. It's just temporary satisfaction. Like me, 
I love a good lip gloss, but I have so many lip glosses. But when I buy them, it doesn't bring me joy and certainly not lasting joy. It's just temporary satisfaction. So why do these things matter? Because when you're spending money, I want you to ask yourself, is this a need? Do I need this to maintain my health and safety? Is this a love lasting joy? Is this a like temporary joy? Is this a want just temporary satisfaction? And I want you to live in the need and love part of this equation more than the like and want part of this equation. It doesn't mean you don't get any likes and wants, but all your likes and wants take away from your needs and love. Needs and loves mean you get to live more of a life with your funds and your money. Likes and wants mean you're living a little less of a life. Does that make sense? All right, moving on. Budgeting, right? So I'm the budget so you know I love a good budget. So if you're having trouble budgeting, you know, Green Path has services that can help you. And the initial session is free. Certainly lean into that. So one of the ways that I like to make budgeting a little bit easier is what I mentioned earlier, to separate, to see. I like to have separate accounts, checking, checking, saving, savings. It helps me to see checking account for spending, checking account for bills, right? And so opening up a bills account is really going to help you significantly help having a separate checking account where bills are paid out of. And especially if you can automate it, that's really going to help you significantly lower how much you um you overdraft because you can see your money more clearly and help you get like get a clear understanding of how much money is really allocated toward bills because sometimes we have all of our money like what I call in a pot so I'm Nigerian so we have a food called jello rice pot food so that means you have your starch the rice meat sometimes they have corned beef and veggie in jello rice and let's just say you are um, Maybe you're Portuguese. I think paella, right? So I think paella is, this, is that Portuguese, right? Or maybe arroz con pollo. So this is pot food where all of the food is in one pot, you know? Now that's great for food, but terrible for money. You really want to have your money separated so you can clearly see. Does that make sense? Got it? When I say got it, you can say good. All right, moving on savings. Okay. Now savings. Remember I mentioned before checking, checking, saving, savings. I like to have two types of savings accounts because I believe savings again has two functions, savings for emergencies, savings for goals. So you obviously want to be your emergency savings is of utmost importance. It's your first line of defense. I want you to think to yourself, if you were to lose your job and you were to financially fall, that first net is going to be emergency savings, not a credit card, ideally. So you really want to start funding your emergency savings um, as soon as you can. We've all seen from the last year or so how financial trauma can affect all of us simultaneously. And having an emergency savings can help slow down the effects of the financial trauma. Right. And then savings for goals. If you really want to get funky with it, you can have multiple buckets for different goals. Right. So you might be saving for a house, saving for a car. And certainly you should also be saving for investing if you have not started investing just already. Does that make sense? These are your buckets for saving. Does that make sense? Got it. Remember, I said when I say got it, you say good. Got it. Good. Got it. Good. <laughs> All right. Four, we're cooking with grease. Um, so let me just check on time. Perfect. Okay. So debt, unexpected money using your smartphone. So here is how I like to, um, attack debt. So one, there are two methods for paying down debt. There's the avalanche method and the snowball method. The snowball method is really when you're going to pay down debt with the lowest balance first, because you're going to achieve early success when you do that. So I like to start with the snowball method. And as the balances on my debt get a little bit higher, I like to switch over to the avalanche method because the avalanche method has you paying off debt with the highest interest rate first, right? If you need debt management help, again, you can get a free call with Green Path. So you're not doing it alone. But one of the ways that I like to expedite my debt payoff is something called unexpected money. That's any money I receive outside of my normal J-O-B, my job. So I used to be a preschool teacher and I would get my normal pay, but then I used to tutor and babysit on the side. You can consider that unexpected money. 
or let's just say like I got that shirt from Target and let's just say pretend it was $50, but I got up to the cash register and she says, well, actually it's 50% off. It's only $25. That's money that I was, I was already going to spend that 50. So $25 is technically money that is like in limbo. So I can transfer that money. I can call it unexpected money to the debt that I'm currently paying off. You go to eat out with your best friend and you know she treats you at the end you didn't realize that thirty dollars you were going to spend on your lunch or your dinner that's money that you can put toward debt you know so but you do it with your smartphone that money that you are about to spend make that transfer right away with your smartphone i like to do that within the within an hour to, to so that way i know i have a jump start on get taking that money and putting it somewhere okay all right credit so one of the best ways to pay off um, or to raise your credit score is to, to what I call pay off your pennies. So if you have a credit card that has a 0% or has a zero, yes, you've already paid it off, not a 0% interest rate, but you have a credit card that's paid off. I want you to consider looking at that budget that I helped you create earlier. And I want you to ask yourself, what is the lowest expense on my money list, your budget? And so if that lowest expense, let's just say it's, I don't know, Netflix for like, I don't know, what is Netflix like 12 bucks a month? You're going to put, that's going to be the only thing on your card. So let's pretend like one of these things is my card. I'm like looking for something that could be a card. All right. So this is like a parking ticket, not a parking ticket, but a parking thing. So this is my credit card. This is my bills account that I mentioned earlier. This is Netflix. Netflix normally takes the money from the bills account, but we're going to put a card that's paid off in the middle. Netflix is going to charge the card. My bills account is going to pay the card off in full. When you pay off a card in full every month, you get a little extra boost in the juice when it comes to your credit score. Paying off a card in full every month is a great way to start to really activate and raise your credit score. Now, the key is you want to pay it off after the statement date. The statement date is the date that the credit card company says, Tiffany used her card. You want your card. You want them to say that you use your card and you want to pay it by the due date because you don't want to be late. The reason why you want to pay it after the statement date is because if you pay it off too soon, you they never get to see the card was used, card was paid off, card was used, card was paid off. Does that make sense? I'm telling you, my credit score after the Great Recession, why do they call recessions Great Recessions or Great Depressions? They're not great. After the not so great recession and I lost my job and I lost my, um, I couldn't afford my condo anymore. So I lost my um, house due to foreclosure. My 802 credit score fell to a 547. And this is one of the ways paying off a card in full every month. It was one of the ways I was able to raise my credit score back up again. So it's very helpful, right? So another thing about credit is becoming an authorized user. So if you know somebody with great credit like me, you can ask, this is typically a family member, and you can ask if they can add you on their card as an authorized user. I did this for my sister, my baby sister, Lisa, because her credit wasn't the greatest. And so the card that I was paying off in full every month, she asked to be added to that card. So we called the credit card company together. And when I paid off the card in full, it looked like she paid off the card in full. Now, here's the key, though. You want to make sure that you're choosing someone who's actually paying off that card in full, because if they're late, it looks like you're late. So that part is really important. And the good thing about being an authorized user is that even if they're late, you're still not responsible for what they put on their card. But still, we're not trying to be added to someone's card that's not being paid off in full. OK. So becoming an authorized user is a quick way to start getting, you don't get a ton of points, but you start to get some residual points on your credit card, on your credit score. So let's get clear on the components of your credit score, right? 10% increase. This is when someone other than you looks at your credit in an effort to lend to you. So when you go to your favorite, say, mm, I don't know, I'm trying to think like what's kind of everywhere. You go to your favorite, I don't know, like this is a Target. And they're just like, hey, would you like to open up a card so you can save on 5%? What they're really saying is, would you like to lose some credit? Would you like to lose some credit points off your credit score? Every time you apply for a store card, especially in particular, you're losing points. 
you know? And so you want to save inquiries for when they're really important. You're buying a house, you're going to need to get an inquiry. You're getting a car, you're going to need to get an inquiry. You're looking to get an apartment, you're likely going to have an inquiry. So save it for those important moments, not for things like getting a store card unnecessarily or just letting any old body run your credit. Because here's the thing, even if you're denied the card, guess what? You still lose those points. 10% is type of debt. So the credit bureaus just like to see that you have a mix. Do you have revolving debt, which is credit card debt? Do you have installment loans, which are like, you know, like a car note or a mortgage when you, when you owe a lump sum and you pay in installments to pay it off? Don't do anything here. The longer you live, the more likely you are to have just different types of debt. That will come naturally. 15% is length of credit history. Just how long have you navigated with credit? You don't have to do anything here either. Just keep living. 30% is amounts owed, also often ca called utilization. Now, here is where so many people get stuck. When so many people are struggling with their credit and they're wondering why their score is not going up, it's typically utilization. It means of your credit card, and let's just say this credit card is a $100 limit. How much is your balance? If my balance is $50 on a $100 limit card, my utilization rate is 50%. Half the card is being used. That's too much. You want to never use more than 30% of your card. Ideally, I know life happens, but that's the ideal. Keeping utilization under 30% Closer, really, as closest to zero as you can get, the better. If you keep your utilization at about 30, you're going to be able to maintain your score. You keep it under 15 or 10 percent, you're going to see your score start to raise. You keep it even lower than that, you're going to really see your score raise. So 30 is a new 100 when it comes to utilization. 35 percent payment history. Do you pay those people when they ask how much they ask, at least the minimum? That's just, do you make on-time payments? One of the best ways to affect your payment history is to automate your bills so you don't forget. If you're anything like me, I've got the memory of an 80-year-old. If you leave it to me, everything's going to be late. So just automate your bills, okay? Most people have, well, most lenders look at your FICO score. There are different types of scores, but I like to focus on the FICO score because if you have a good FICO score, you likely have a good credit score and other credit score um, with other credit score models. The range for FICO score is 300, which is basically an F minus minus to 850, which is a, a plus plus plus. Now here's the, the, the key. Now, low key, high key, once you get to 740, 750, you are at the beginning of what they call perfect credit. So if your bestie has an 800 and you have a 750, guess what? You're likely still going to be offered the same interest rate. I mean, it's great to have an 800, but don't kill yourself to get an 800. Try to get as above a 750 and you'll be able to um, you'll be able to see receive similar interest rates than people who are in the 800, 820, 850 range. Okay? Yeah, okay. And if you ever need a credit report review, just know you can lean into GreenPad. They will help you with that as well. All right. Next level adulting. All right. So I want you to remember that when it comes to investing, there are two components to investing. There's investing for retirement, which is absolutely necessary, and investing for wealth, which is optional. Investing for retirement means you are setting aside money so you can maintain your current lifestyle when you're no longer working. I like to call it taking care of your wander. So I've named my older self. Her name is Wanda and Wanda is sassy. Okay. So Wanda is the type of old lady that knows all your business. She knows like, mm -mm, you are not a natural blonde child. Right. So Wanda is minding everybody's business. That's me as an old lady. So I like, I encourage you, if you have a, what would you think your old person nickname would be? Mine is Wanda. And so when I'm making choices with my money for Tiffany, I have to also consider Wanda because Wanda's not trying to work. Now, investing for wealth is for Tiffany. Investing for wealth means I get to increase my current lifestyle now and leave a legacy for my heirs. Investing for retirement is for your older self. Does that make sense? So retirement comes first because your older self is not likely to be able to work like you are now. Wealth comes second 
because I'm already living now. I would love to be able to have more now, but more importantly, I have to look after Wanda first, right? So I just want to keep, keep that in mind. If you're looking for about investing for retirement, consider something called a target date fund. If you don't know how to do anything else, a target date fund is just a mutual fund that you get to choose the year that you're picking to withdraw your money, typically your retirement year. And what happens is with a target date fund, you put your money in every single month. And what happens is that money becomes more conservatively invested the closer you are to retirement. Because in the beginning, when you have plenty of time, they're going to try to make as much money as possible for you. But as you get closer and closer and closer to retirement, to your target date, the money is going to be more, more conservatively invested because they know you're going to pull it out soon. And for investing for wealth, if you don't know how to do anything else, consider looking at index funds. An index fund is really just a basket of investments that follow a particular market. Have you ever, think about a market literally like a supermarket. Have you ever heard of the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ? These are particular markets like supermarkets. The S&P 500 supermarket is 500 large companies in that market that trade on the market. So a lot of people like to, if they're starting to invest, they like to choose the S&P 500 because you know that by way of this basket, you are automatically investing in this um, in this uh, market that has 500 of these large companies. So you get those 500 companies without having to pick them individually. So retirement, target date fund, wealth, um, index funds. OK, OK. Seven, your money team. I want you to consider that you should not go it alone. This is why Green Path is here. You should have some sort of assistance on your journey. Doctors need doctors. Hairdressers need hairdressers, right? And so even if me, like I have help on my financial journey, you might need an accountant when it comes to taxes. You might need a financial advisor as you start to grow wealth. You might need an attorney if you're doing like an estate plan. And for sure, you might need a some debt management, financial counseling, credit report review, housing services, student loan counseling. This is These are all things that Green Path um that Green Path has as services. So you can lean in there. Number seven, your money team. You should Money is a team sport. You should not go it alone. That's why we're here today. I am here as a result of the team that has been behind me. And so often people are not sure um, how to find their team, but you don't have to wonder because you're here. You have a resource right in front of you. All right, insurance. So when it comes to insurance, the typical debate is, should I get term or should I get universal insurance or a permanent insurance, right? Universal is a type of permanent insurance. Term insurance is similar to like your car insurance, your renter's insurance. Universal insurance is insurance that doesn't ever expire. So for most people, term is the insurance that they likely should start off with because with term insurance, you can afford more insurance coverage for less. Sometimes people are nervous about term because they're like, oh, well, then it expires. Well, here's the thing. So does your car insurance. If you don't pay anymore, you don't have a car anymore. And you're not like, oh, man, I didn't get to a car accident. If your term insurance expires, it means you're still alive. We celebrate that. And ideally, your insurance is there to cover you or really to be there for your heirs during your earning years. So let's just say you have children. And you're like, I'm going to get a 30 year policy or 20 year policy while my children are still underage and might need my income. So it's OK for that insurance to expire. I say, I mean, everybody has their own choice because here's the thing. If your child is now 40, they don't need your insurance policy unless you would want to consider something different. If maybe you have a special needs child that will always need assistance. So I'll give you an example why I say it's such a why I prefer term. Because 60% of people never finish paying their um, whole, their um, permanent insurance policy, meaning most people can't continue to pay it. The difference is so great. I think I looked up the other day, like uh, a healthy 30 year old woman with a million dollar term, 30 year term policy, her payment would be, I want to say 30 or 40 bucks a month. That same healthy um, 30 year old woman with a million dollar permanent life policy, she's looking at 740 bucks a month. Now, I don't know about you, 
but if I were to lose my job, how could I afford 740 bucks a month? For me, I got my first policy when I was 27 because I bought a, a condo. And if something happened to me, although I didn't have heirs, I knew that my parents or my sisters would have to pay off that house. So I bought a policy to cover that. So you look at policies to, to support your heirs if you're no longer here, but also if you have debt that you're leaving behind. Now, my policy cost me, I want to say, $21 a month. And I think I got like a $300,000 policy because my condo was $220,000 and I had some student loan debt. Now, even when I lost my job during the Great Recession, guess who could still afford $21 a month? Now, what if my policy cost me two or $300 a month? I likely would have had to um, cancel that policy and surrender it. So just consider that when it comes to insurance. And ideally, you're looking to ask yourself, how much is my income times 10, my annual income times 10? That's around the ballpark of how much your policy would be, okay? Net worth. Just keep in mind that net worth, ooh, I have to wrap up, is what you own minus what you owe, right? So you want to own more. That's assets. That's investing. That's um, that's uh, you are like real estate. Maybe you're starting a business. Assets are what you own. They put money into your pocket. Liabilities are what you owe, basically debt. And last but not least, estate planning. Beneficiaries, a will, a trust. If you have children, you need a will like yesterday. Ideally, we all need wills. If you have an estate that's worth over $100,000, consider a trust. If your estate is worth over $500,000, definitely get a trust. If you have um, uh, beneficiaries, your beneficiaries, you, you might think to yourself, I don't have an estate. Do you have a bank account? Do you have a pension? Do you have a retirement account? These are things that you can add. Do you have um, life insurance? You add your beneficiaries to and update that. And so that means if something were to happen to you, these people don't have to fight to get to the assets that you set aside for them. All right. Have a little homework real quick. Create a budget. Open up your bills account. Open up your savings accounts if you haven't. Set an, a monthly auto, automated credit card payment. Become an authorized user if it makes sense for you. Add your beneficiaries. You guys already have a quiz with Green Pass. We'll do that one instead. And I hope this was good for you because it was so good for me. So you can find me here. I'm the Budgetista on all the social media platforms. And thank you. All right. Great stuff, Tiffany. We loved it. So informative. I love Wanda. I'd like to meet Wanda sometime and just have a conversation with her. I'm sure that'd be a lot of fun. All right. So let's keep the program moving. Um, certainly great information that we can all use. And we're going to dig deeper into the information that you shared. So to help us do that, we are so excited to have with us this evening, Gail Perry Mason. She's an author, financial coach, founder of the Money Matters for Youth program that provides financial literacy to Detroit youth and a talk show host. Now, join the conversation to ask Tiffany many of the questions that are on all of our minds. So Gail, come on in, take it away. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for that great introduction. I really appreciate that because number one, it's great for all of us to be part of this wonderful movement. Can you imagine Green Path and Bajanista coming together? What an amazing movement. We talk about Green Path and financial wellness and also look at our Tiffany. This book is such a great book. And a lot of people are gonna get an opportunity to win this book and have this book. And if not, I want you to go buy this book. This is a great investment. Just like Colin Greenbath is a great investment. So I am so looking forward to the one-on-one -on -one with Tiffany today. Because let me tell you, when I've been in the financial industry for over 30 years, so probably her age. So the best thing for us to do when we're in the financial service industry or when we're just doing things to help one another out when it comes to finances or anything, is to send the elevator back down. That's why Bajanista, we sent the elevator back down and she's rising up even higher. So I'm so excited to have this one-on-one -on -one with Tiffany today and I hope you enjoy it too. Hey, Tiffany. <laughs> hey, Gail, how are you? Good, how are you? Excellent. Am I frozen? No. Oh, okay. All right, good. Because it looks like it from here. So anyway, let me just start. First of all, what a fabulous job. You Thank just you. did an amazing job. 
So that's first and foremost. So it's always, so I love you and I love how you take a holistic approach. And anyone who gets this book, I have to say this, if you get this book and go to Green Path, you are on the right path for financial freedom. You talk about wellness, this is what it's all about. So, and and I just, you know, I wanna start with, I'm gonna just ask you a few questions that I want you to just explain to everyone because I know you explain mm-hmm. everything about budget and estate planning and life insurance and how you lost your home and you had to get your credit score back up and all that. So everybody who is listening today and who's on the day has a totally different financial situation. You know, we all are, have different financial situations, but I, I believe that, you know, being in the financial service industry, that everybody needs one thing. They need mm-hmm. a personal board of directors and they're their yes. chief life officer. So on their board of directors, you need the budgetista. <laughs> so that's one thing. Another thing that you need, you have to have green path. So, and I'm saying the one thing, and it doesn't, it doesn't cost anything to put together your personal board of directors. So I think Green Path needs to be on everybody's personal board directors. And just like you said, you need your wealth team, you need financial Mm -hmm. advisors, you need accountants, you need that. But I think this is a starting point for every person that you cannot afford to do. So let me ask you just a couple of questions. Like during this pandemic, so Tiffany, what do you think, like how could you save during this pandemic? How can people build a savings? Just, just, what, what can we do? Well, here's the thing, Gail, as you know, sometimes it's okay to admit that maybe you don't have the opportunity to save during this pandemic. You know, um, there are some people who literally lost a significant amount of income, you know, or they lost their job altogether. And you can certainly save by cutting back or trying your best to make more. I do know because of the extra boost in unemployment that people, if, for folks who that made a difference for them, were able to start to set aside that. But the function or the easiest way to save is through automation. It's to have that money automatically transferred over after you've already dictated via your budget that is there to be done. But I don't want people to think like if I'm not saving during financial traumatic times that there must be something wrong with me. No, there are moments that this is the moment where you're supposed to be leaning in to spend your savings because we're in the emergency now. So I'm giving you that permission. If you can save, great. Automated, automated, automated. If you can't save, that's okay because these are the times that savings were made for. And you've mentioned that money is a team sport. And yes. so one thing that, and I think, you know, we need a budget or a spending plan, which you talked about at the beginning. And we do need that financial, that three minute financial assessment. Three minute is mm-hmm. one of the best investments you can make. I think nobody's money should ever be homeless. We do need to put that GPS on our money. So even say, mm-hmm. well, I can't save, but I do need to know every dollar is accounted for like you said, automatic investing. What is the Mm -hmm. easiest way? Say somebody was like, well, you know what? I can't, how do I find time to get an automatic investment? So how do we find time? I think everybody needs a mind your own business day. So what do you think, Tiffany, like, how do you think people find time? People's like, I'm so distracted now. I don't have time. How am I gonna set up these automatic payments? How do I find time to even call Green Path? What do you think we can do? What do you think we should do to balance it all out? Well, first you want to decide, what is your desired outcome? Sometimes we we say that we're stressed because of the money component, but then we haven't put anything on the calendar to help ease that stress. So one, identifying, I want to do better with my money and I'm going to put time on the calendar to make that happen. If you literally have to put it on your calendar, like I like to use Google calendars because it's free, you know, I love me some free. Right. And Google Calendar will send you a, a, like a reminder pop up to say this is when you're meeting with whomever. And so I, when I used to be a preschool teacher, when the kids would go to sleep during nap time, sometimes I would sit and work on my finances. You know, you might say if you have a significant other, make it a date or you're like, OK, you know, every third Friday of the month, we sit down at this time to talk about our finances together. So 
And if you if you at least take the five to ten minutes to reach out to Green Path and make um and 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 schedule a session with a counselor, you know that that is on your calendar. You know, basically, the best way to find time is to involve someone other than you because it helps to hold you accountable to that date and time. And and I think that, that's perfect. I know because but we don't. A lot of people don't take the time, or they take. How do you take the fear out of it? Because the one thing is a lot of people say, oh my God, I have too much in student loans. And I don't know if people know that Green Path has a student loan program. Or it's like, I'm in foreclosure, I'm embarrassed. A lot of people are embarrassed, Tiffany, as we all know that. Everybody comes to that financial embarrassment. And I, the one thing I can say that everybody who I've met at Green Path, starting with the CEO on down, takes they put their heart into it so i think feeling the comfort and reaching their hand out and everything but from, they have student loan counseling counseling housing counseling but how do you take that step and say let me take the fear out of it and also let me take the emotions and the embarrassment out of it what, what can we do so what do you think i find that fear is an extension of the true trouble which is shame right? That people are experiencing shame. So as a result, they're radiating this fear. They're radiating this, like a, this inability to see a solution because this is what shame does. Shame is a liar. Shame doesn't say, Hey Gail, you've made a mistake. Shame says, Hey Gail, you are the mistake. Shame is one of the lowest humans, human emotions. Shame keeps you in silence Shame tells you you're the only one, and that's just not true. Shame is a liar. And the only antidote to shame, the only way to shake shame is to give voice to the thing that you're ashamed of. This is why counseling helps so significantly, right? So let's just say you're reaching out to your Green Path counselor and you're just like, I'm, I'm terrified. I feel ashamed of what I'm feeling. What you'll hear is that you're not the only one that has been through it. That, you know, that, that, because what we think is, it's just me, but giving voice to the thing that you're afraid of, especially if you're sitting down with a professional will help to ease some of that shame, lift some of that, that fear. So you can see the solutions ahead of you. That's true. Now I'm going to say, and this is the one thing when I think of, when I think of you, when I think of Green Path, I think of the word poor. Poor means passed over opportunity repeatedly. I think people don't take advantage of the opportunities or think the opportunities are not out here. Whether it comes to housing, whether it comes to student loans, whether it comes to budgeting, whether it comes to the whole wellness, they take more of a holistic approach. And I think people don't understand. And I, and what I want to encourage everyone that, you know, listens to you every day, just so exciting. Talk about, you know, money and how to get your budget together. I want them to understand that it's, it's within reach. So yes. I want them to understand. And I'm just, and nobody's asked me to say this at all. I just, I know how people I've sent to Green Path and they come back and they have so much gratitude. Your book talks about gratitude, joy, everything. That's how you started out. So I just think, how do you make that first step? And I think that's what I want people to know today. How do you make that first step to go and do that three minute, you know, financial checkup? How do you do that? Like, what should we encourage people to do is to do that? Besides, you're gonna get the book, the first, you know, maybe, you know, 50 people are gonna get the book, but what should we do to encourage them? So one of the ways that I found that helps me on my financial journey is an accountability partner. So my best friend, Linda, is one of my accountability partners. So, you know, when I was getting like, you know, the, the, the pink envelopes, the red envelopes, you know, them envelopes, that means late, past due, about to shut off. I was too scared to open them. So Linda yeah. and I used to have a swap party where she would bring hers. I when would bring mine. When it's colorful, when you got a color yes. <laughs> Yes. So I would open Linda's and read it to her because she would be like, what does this say? I'm like, it says you're late, girl, but it's not as late as you thought. So having an accountability partner, 
So if you are nervous, if you're scared to see what it says, do you have someone that you can trust? They're, they're not having to be a financial expert. And it's actually preferable, but that they're not. Do you have a bestie, a husband, a sister, a cousin, your work, your work best friend, someone that you can say, I'm trying to do better with my money. Like, are you? Let's do it together. Let's take the quiz together and talk about, you know, you know what we got. Let's schedule like I'm going to call Green Path. You're going to call Green Path. And we're, I'm going to share like what I learned and you're going to share what you learned. Having an accountability partner as you go through what seems to be scary makes it a little less so. You know, the same way that you might go to the gym with your best friend or you know, go out to eat with your best friend, make them a part of your financial journey. And so I just say, don't go it alone. And that is so true. Uh, I think accountability partner needs to be on our personal board of directors. So yes. I think if we have like Green Path, uh, you talked about having an attorney and, you know, with the state planning and everything else. And I'm, I love the way that you broke everything down. But I know a lot of us are at different journeys in our entire, mm -hmm. in our life. One thing I would say, you're young, I'm older, no matter what I want everyone to know, no matter what age you are in your life, you can still do things to get your finances in order. Whether like I yes. look at it all the time, like, you know what I'm going to do today? I take a mind my own business day, Tiffany. I take a mind mm -hmm. my own business day. So I think everybody should have a day. They just, you know, mind their own business and say, you know what? I'm attending my business. I'm going to make some layoffs today. I'm going to take this financial checkup today. I'm going to take this financial assessment. You know what? I'm going to call Green Path and find out about my student loans. I'm going to do this. So how, what do you think? Like, do you really think people should take a mind their own business day? How often should they do this? How often should they do their financial checkup? How often should they check in? Just like going to the doctor. How mm -hmm. often do you think people should do this? What, what, what's your, what would you say? Well, in the beginning, when you're really trying to get on track, I like a cadence of like once a week, even if it's just a five minute check in to look at your bank account, check in with your accountability partner. And as you get, you know, to a space where you're feeling a little stronger that you might do every two weeks and then once a month. So I would say now my husband and I, we do like a big check in with each other. Like I would say once a quarter. But as things come up, we were just talking about insurance yesterday. Like, oh, you know, should we update our insurance policy? Should we switch over? So we talk about things as they come up, but we do a big, huge kind of like overhaul every quarter. So, but in the beginning, when you're first starting, so you can keep the momentum going, I like a, a 10, 15 minute checkup once a week, just so you can keep that, that momentum going. So some, some mind your own business time. So you're just like, when I first started my journey, I literally every Friday on payday, when I was in my twenties, I used to literally you take that time to look at my paycheck, compare it to my bills and kind of do my own profit and loss statement for myself. And that kept me going. And I don't have to do that as often now, but certainly in the beginning, you want to do it more frequently. Yes. Um, am I freezing up still? I, I don't know if that's, I want to make sure I'm not freezing up. I don't know if I need to refresh. So, and that's sometimes what we need to do with our finances is refresh with our finances. So I'm going to say that and use it as a thing to talk about, you know, what we're going through right now. Um, and then one thing I do want to say is our, what actionable steps that, so we have to take action with everything. And that's one thing that, you know, people should know what's the first step, of course, to financial health, but what is some action? actionable items, some takeaways. I want everybody, we talked about different takeaways, but what are some actionable steps that people can take to implement starting now? What can they do? Well, one, start with the cornerstone for the rest of your financial life, which is a budget, right? So I gave you the four-step budget. That means you're listing everything you spend money on, how much it costs you monthly, subtract it from your monthly take-home pay, and you kind of have what I like to call beginning savings, like what's kind of left over. So that is actionable. Create that budget. If you're someone who's like my husband that needs a, a budget without budgeting, tell yourself, okay, tomorrow I'm going to reach out to payroll and have my money split before I get. Checking, checking, saving, savings. That is another actionable item you can do. 
Three, you can say, okay, I actually need help with my debt management. I'm not sure where to start. I need someone to review my credit. I'm not sure where to start. I need someone to help me prepare for a home. This is a big goal of mine. I'm not sure where to start. I'm having trouble with student loan. I need some counseling, financial counseling. So number three, ask for help. You can get a, for your, a free call with Green Path. So that should be so creating your budget, splitting your money before you get it, asking for help. Do not go it alone. I have help. You know, I don't go it alone. It's You're not meant to go. Money is a team sport. So that's something that you could do actionably. And literally today, because I do believe in taking action within the 20, first 24 hours of learning something, take that Green Path quiz. It's three minutes. Take that quiz with your significant other, your partner. Take that quiz with your bestie, your mom, your dad. Take that quiz. So those are four things that you can do that are not going to take an extreme amount of time, but are, can make a huge difference in your life. Wow, that, what wonderful information with the one-on-one, -on -one, the one and only Budgetista. Talking about getting your budget together, talking about getting your credit together, talk about saving, talk about investing. Everything that the Budgetista is doing is one thing that we can do. It's a path to financial freedom. How do you get that path to financial freedom? You call Green Path. It's right here. It's absolutely free. I mean, a quick financial checkup. But let me tell you, I think everybody needs their own personal board of directors that is what that's a game changer right there so on your personal board of directors you know everybody say oh i can't afford a personal board of directors guess what it doesn't cost you a thing what i want you to do is call green Pack. just give them a call you have all the information right here today just to give them a call and say you know what let me start interviewing my personal board of directors starting now the budgetista listen to her podcast please do this only thing it costs you is your time. That can be the game changer in your financial freedom life. Whether it's retirement planning, whether it's getting your credit together, whether it's student loans, whatever it is, we talked about it today. But I want to go back to Mark, and Mark is going to finish this amazing conversation. You know why? Because we do not, with Green Path and Bajanisa coming together, what they don't want is for you to ever be poor. Poor means past over opportunity repeatedly. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Now back to you, Mark. Take it over and ask more questions. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Tiffany, let's continue the conversation there where we're having a little technical difficulty with the uh, with the signal there. But let's talk a little bit more um, ab about moving forward. And, and especially as people are coming out of the pandemic, this is such a difficult time. Um, what the pandemic taught us was, wow, you've got to keep your money in order at all times because you never know when disaster is going to strike. So let's talk a little bit about an emergency fund. I know that's a big deal um, for folks right now. How do we establish one? Where do we begin? So when it comes to an emergency fund, you start by opening up a savings account. You want to separate your savings from your checking. Remember I said before, we don't want pot. Pot food is delicious. Pot money, not so much. So you want to have a separate savings account just for emergencies and start to automate a transfer there every pay period if possible. I know that's not always possible, when, but when it's possible, please do so because an emergency account is your first line of defense. As soon as you lose your job, as soon as you experience some financial trauma or drama, that is the first place I want you to go. I was helping a young woman uh, the other day and she was telling me how she didn't want to spend the money in her savings account. So that's why she used her credit card. And I said, do you know why they call it an emergency savings account? She was like, yes. I said, because it's there for what? Emergencies. <laughs> you know, because I get it. She's like, I saved this money so hard. Right. I said, here's the thing about an emergency savings account is that you get to take an interest-free loan from yourself. When you swipe a credit card, first, you're taking out a loan, but the credit card company, that's not your sister, that's not your cousin, and that's not you. Mm -hmm. They're going to want some interest on that. So start by taking right. out a loan for yourself before leaning into borrowing from somebody else. So start by opening up a savings account, and then second, start by automating a transfer from every pay period if possible. 
Got it. Got it. Got it. I love the split it before you get it concept. That is awesome. But now coming out of the out of, out of the pandemic and folks may have run up their credit card debt. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about paying that debt down, if, if, if you can, please, um, because I know, you know, you, it, it looks a lot of times like you're not making any progress. You made that mm-hmm. payment, but it's all interest or or, or you just you're like, wow, I paid seventy five dollars on it last month. The balance is still the same. How do we methodically move through that process and get over that mental hurdle that we're not getting anywhere? Well, first, know this, that there are ways to lower your interest rate. And so what I love about Green Pass is they have a debt management. um, They have debt management help. Right. So because a lot of people don't know that you can call to see if you can negotiate a lower interest rate. If you're someone who's like, I don't know how to do that. Get help. Call Green Path, make that call. They can help to do so because your interest is the fee you pay for having borrowed that money. The higher the interest rate, the higher the fee, the longer it's going to take you to pay off that money. If you can get your interest rate lowered significantly, you will be able to pay off that debt faster. And as I mentioned before, there are two methods that I like. It's the snowball method and the avalanche method. The snowball method is when you focus on the debt with the lowest balance first. And I like to start there because I want you to have early success. It's like if you're like, I'm going to exercise tomorrow. I do not suggest that you say you're going to run two miles. You have not run in a while, you know. (laughs) And so instead, I would say, hey, you know what? I I want you to walk two blocks. You know, let's get some early success. That's the avalanche. That's the snowball method. And then once you have, once that um, your balances that you're paying off, they start to get greater and greater, then switching over to the avalanche method is, is, is probably more reasonable because this is when you pay off the debt with the highest interest rate, the more expensive interest rate. And so and this debt is more expensive to you than debt with a lower interest rate. And so in doing so, you are paying off your debt really technically faster. And so if you do that, ask for help. Get lower interest rates with the help of Green Path. Start out with the snowball method and then ease your way over to the avalanche method. You can create a system for paying off debt. But I honestly want you with debt, Mark, to kind of set it and semi forget it because we tend to focus on debt freedom, debt freedom, debt freedom. But debt freedom is a goal, not the goal. Because mm-hmm. if you get debt freedom and then you stop there, so what? I have a nephew. He doesn't have a car note. He doesn't have student loans. He doesn't have a mortgage, but he's broke because he's five, right? So you can be <laughs> debt free and, and, and be a toddler and five. Debt freedom is not enough, right? It's a goal, but not the goal. The goal is financial wholeness and wealth. Right, 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 right. Great stuff, uh, Tiffany. Um, and 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 we can find it all in one location in your Get Good With Money book, which is what I love yes. too. Um, so valuable. And congratulations on the budget, Nista Law. I mean, we got to start young people early with with um, giving them the tools that they need to begin to to be on the path to financial wellness, so they don't get sick and then have to get well. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> All right. Time now to um, hear another great testimonial. Let's check out Jeff and Victoria's story. We just realized that we completely overextended ourselves. We thought we could just wing it and figure it out and let more time go down and that's when the quicksand got real bad and it got to the point where creditors were calling and we were deciding on whether to pay our mortgage or the credit card companies or for food and then really hit home when we couldn't pay the mortgage anymore. We got a pre-foreclosure letter in and that's when we kind of had to really reevaluate what we were doing so that we didn't lose all the businesses, the house, everything we're working for would have absolutely been for nothing. We started trending up after we joined Green Path because a lot of that initial stress we had dissipated, but back in 2017, that was by far our most stressful year. We were fighting and arguing a lot, constantly, discussing money, constantly having arguments about money. There's so much stress, lots of fear. We were able to 
eliminate this debt. It's behind us. It's no longer a part of our lives anymore. And we grew a lot as individuals. And I definitely think we grew a lot as a couple because of this experience. Yeah, thank you so much, Jeff and Victoria, for sharing for us. What a great story. And um, Tiffany, we can't thank you enough for, for giving us this transformative information that we can all benefit from hearing tonight. And now we want to hear from you, you folks out there in TV land. Um, we're going to spend the next few minutes answering some questions from the audience. If you have a question, simply put it in the chat and uh, we'll respond and we'll get to as many as we can in the allotted time. And if you have a specific or personal question about your financial plan, just call our partners at GreenPath at www.greenpath.org or the number is 1-800-550-1961. Now, while we're gathering some questions from the chat, we also want to know what you think about the financial hurdles by answering a quick poll question. Uh, if you can, we're going to pop it up on the screen. And again, that is save.greenpath.com. And don't forget about your chance to win your own copy of the Budget Nista's new book, Get Good With Money, by visiting our virtual photo booth and sharing it on social media with your friends and the hashtag, hashtag get transformed. And don't forget to tag at GreenPath. All right, let's get to uh, some of these questions. Um, first of all, Tiffany, let's, you know, we, you, you talked about 30 is the new 100 when it comes to credit card utilization, mm -hmm. but a lot of folks get in trouble because they have multiple cards. Um, so it's hard to keep a, 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 an idea of, you know, what balances you have on what cards. How many cards should we have ideally? And how do we focus on that 30% ratio util in, when it comes to utilization? So Mark, first, I want you to understand that it's 30% per card and as an average of all of your cards. So you want 30% oh, wow. on this one card, but then also, so let's just say, remember I gave you the example that, okay, I'm going to take out another little fake little card. This is my cold stone creamy card. You can see my, my mind is ice cream, <laughs> right? So let's just say I've got this card, 100% limit of 50% balance. So now I'm 50% utilization, too high. This card, 100% right. limit, no balance. As an average, I'm not 50% anymore. I'm 25% because I'm not using right. this one. I'm using half of this one. But this is what people do. I'm not even using this card. I'm going to go ahead and close it. Now I just want 20 from 25% usage to 50% usage. So mm -hmm, because you close the card that was helping to offset your 50% usage here. So you want right. to be mindful. It's an average, but also trying to keep each individual card up below 30%. Just keep that in mind. And uh, what was the other question before that? It was. Yeah. Just how many should we have generally? Do we need three or four cards? You know, what, what do we need? We have a debit really. card. Yeah. So definitely a debit card if you're going to use a debit card. And I would say, like, I have a card for business and I have um, I do keep my oldest credit card open because it helps with length of credit history for me. But I really don't use it. I use that card as my as my um, pay my pennies off card, the card I leave home and put my Netflix on. So that one card is what I keep home. And then I actually have one card that I use. So for me, I've had three, one for business. One to help my credit score raise by paying it off every month in full and one that I actually use when I'm going to use it. So I would say probably no more than two personal cards for yourself. You know, you really don't need, you know, one might be enough for you, but I know there are some people who have five or six cards. I was one of those people in my twenties. It's very easy for someone to steal your card. The other day, I had not looked at one of my cards in a, in a while and someone from, Jan, from um, December had been using my card. And so I had to call Wow. And, you know, fraud. Yeah. So that's why you don't want to have so many cards because then, you know, you're not paying attention. And so I had not been paying attention and I looked, had to cancel it and then, you know, had to get all those charges removed. So ideally, I would say no more than two cards is necessary unless you additionally have a business. 
Right, right. I was having that conversation with my son just the other night. I was like, you don't need another mm -hmm. card. You got your debit card <laughs> and you have a credit card. You're 26. Leave it alone. <laughs> just, just stay right yeah. there. Just stay right there. Um, you know, um, I, I, I liked your point earlier um, when you talked about a legacy, creating a legacy yeah. and, um, you know, and insurance and all the different aspects of, you know, building personal infinite and uh financial wellness, but building wealth as well. Um, where do you go when you need answers? Like if everybody doesn't have you in their Rolodex, right? Where do you go to find out how much insurance should I buy? Should I buy term? Should I buy whole life? Who, who can you call? Uh, is Does Green Path help you with that? Or where, where do we go? At least you can start with Green Path with some financial counseling to see one, where do you currently stand? Sometimes it's almost like I, I want you to see Green Path as kind of like your general, um, your your what is it, the, the general practitioner, right? That's the doctor you go to. <laughs> that, you know, you're just like, I just know something's not right. And there's some things that that mm -hmm. doctor can take care of, but you might indeed need a specialist. So you might need an attorney and they, they're likely to tell you. Maybe you might need um, an insurance agent and they're likely to tell you. So I would start with your general practitioner and kind of get that referral if you need a specialist, because you don't you don't necessarily want to start with specialists because we all know that specialists can be very expensive. So let's just see if your general practitioner Green Path can help you first, because at least we know that initial um, session is free. OK, awesome. Awesome. Now, let's let's get back to this pandemic. And, and as the economy starts to emerge from the pandemic, people have been on these forbearances with their mortgages. Right. Let, let's talk about strategies to save our homes, because this is the biggest purchase we'll ever make. And then we can talk a little bit about how much uh, mortgage should we bite off and chew anyway. But let's start with the forbearance. First thing that everyone is saying is contact your lender. Right. Do not ignore the letters that come in the mail. Then what do we do? Once we make contact, what do we need to tell them? How, how do we emerge from this successfully? So we'll be honest. You can share that I've been out of work since last year. Um, I know that the forbearance or the deferral process that I've, uh, I applied for is expiring. What happens if I don't have the money when it expires? And know that you don't have to go it alone. There, Green Path lets us know that there are several federal programs providing support, you know, and deferring payments. And so you don't have to go it alone if you're not sure which programs, because that can be very overwhelming. You know, set up a session. It's confidential. It's one on one. So you can be made aware of like, OK, so what happens if I can't afford my federal student loan? When the, mem the memorandum of that is up, what happens if I can't afford my rent? You know, so don't go it alone if you're not sure what those programs are or you're not sure what to say to the lender, you know, because you certainly should reach out to them. At least reach out to Green Path first and let them guide you through that process. And here's one of the things I asked for when I was struggling with my finances during the not so great recession. A friend of mine who was an attorney helped me to navigate some of the legal stuff. And I remember being like, Michaela, Michaela, okay. This is too complicated. You know what? Let <laughs> Help me write a script. So when you do speak to your one-on-one -on -one counselor at Green Path, ask for a script. I literally was like, say it again. Hello, my name is Tiffany. Because it gave me the confidence that I needed that when I reached out to my lender, when I reached out to, to like the person that I owed money to, that I had this script that I could read from, even in my nervousness, to know that I was saying the right thing. So you want to make the most of your session, your free session as well by asking for help, but ask for a script. Don't be shy, they're there to help. Right, um, the housing market seems to be crazy. It just depends on what city you're in. Here in Atlanta, things are going really well. Houses are yes. flying off the market. Um, you better get it while it's hot. Um, in other places, it might be a little bit more of a, a buyer's market. Um, but if you're out there trying to figure out exactly how much mortgage you can afford, um, talk to us a little bit more about some of these formulas. So what you're going to want to look at when you're purchasing a home is you're going to want to understand one, they're going to look at two scores. They're going to look at your credit score. And you remember I said before, Mark, that the beginning of perfect credit is about 74750. I would not be looking for a mortgage until I got that number because that's when you're going to get the best interest rate. Your interest rate is going to determine how much you pay for that house beyond what that house was actually sold to you for. 
And they're also, I want you, and the, the home's price is so significant. That interest rate could cost you an extra tens of thousands of dollars in paying for that home over the lifetime of that loan. So get that perfect credit score of at least a 740. That's one. The second number that they're going to look at is your debt to income ratio. That means how much money do you make every month minus how much debt do you make every month expressed as a percentage. They're going to want to see that you don't owe a ton of other people because mortgage brokers and mortgage lenders are notoriously jealous. They're like, oh, you talking to other people? Oh, you pay other people? <laughs> I don't know. Because their worry is this, Mark, that if things get rough and you owe all these other people, then you might not pay them. And so they like to see that you don't have a ton of other debt. So paying down some of your debt is going to make it easier for a mortgage, mortgage broker to say yes to you. As it is right now, interest rates are still at historic lows. So you can lock in an interest rate. That means that like you will pay less for your house over time than you would have, say, just two years ago. But the problem is that it is definitely almost uh, you, you like unilaterally you know, across the country, almost definitely it's a seller's market because there are more buyers than there are sellers. And so you want to be careful because literally some homes are going for double, if not triple what they were just a few months ago. Whoa. Now, I would ask myself, yes, in some places, because I live in the coast. So you're like, if you're California, mm -hmm. New Jersey, New York, it's crazy. I'm literally looking at right. homes. I'm like, what? That home was just, you know, um, a friend of mine bought her house two years ago for $500,000 and it's now worth about seven fifty. dollars That's significant. Mm -hmm. And you have to ask wow. yourself, is it worth more? Has it gone up in value or has the demand gone up? Because my worry is if it's just demand, when the demand goes down, with that house price all the way go down too. That's what happened during the Great Recession. Of course, that was more about a housing bubble, but still, I purchased my house during great demand. I purchased a condo for $220,000. Then I, three years later, when the housing market bur burst, my $220,000 condo was worth one fifty. dollars And mm -hmm. to this day, I cyber stalk my home, like my old home, to see if it's ever gone back up to 220 mark. It has never gone back up to 220. The most it's ever been right. sold for is $180,000. And I'm like, dad. So you don't want to buy so far above market that you are never able to recoup what you put in. So you just want to be mindful that you don't let your heart get ahead of your head when you're purchasing a home during markets like this. Absolutely. Great advice. And that is that is so frightening because it is the biggest purchase that most of us will ever make. And, you know, it, we really have to do our due diligence with that. So thank you so much uh, for for the great advice and the great insight. Um, and before I let you go this evening, how rewarding is what you do? I would imagine that people come up to you wherever you are around the country and say, oh, my gosh, I read your book. You changed my life. That has to be an amazing feeling. It is, you know, so here's the thing. So I, I used to be a preschool teacher in Newark, New Jersey, but I also live here in Newark, New Jersey. So when you're a teacher, you're already like a local celebrity because your kids see you out in the supermarket and they're like, Miss <laughs> Tiffany, Miss <laughs> Tiffany, you know? And so it literally feels like an extension of that. But instead of three and four year olds shouting like you're a celebrity, it's adults saying, oh, budgetista, budgetista. You know, I, you know, I, I just want to thank you. Like if I go food shopping, it could be the cashier. If I go clothes shop, people, people will stop me all over and they share stories of how their life was transformed. And so I know that I was called and created to be a teacher. I have just decided to be a teacher in a different space. And it is very rewarding. It is really the best thing. I really believe the purpose of life is to live a life of service and I get to do so abundantly. So, so thank yeah. you. Yeah, you, yeah, you're teaching stuff that we can actually apply to our everyday lives for the rest of our lives, unlike mm -hmm. calculus and chemistry, which <laughs> I haven't thrown up anything lately. So we're fine. <laughs> 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 Tiffany, it's been awesome. Hey, in the meantime, let's check the poll results and let's find out what people think their biggest financial challenges are. Let's pop the uh, results up on the screen. Was it too much debt, bad credit, the cost of owning or renting a home, or a lack of savings? Let's find out what people said.
it's hard to create savings, Tiffany, when we've got debt, wouldn't you say? I mean, that's that's part of the 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 recipe for disaster. Absolutely. And to me, I say this, if you have a savings issue, you either have a don't make enough problem or spend too much problem. And so, so many times we misidentify the problem. Here's how you know you have a don't make enough problem when most of your money is going toward bills. That means most of your money is going to your toward your responsibilities. So likely you have a don't make enough problem. Don't guess. Do your budget. Do the math. Where's most of my money going? Oh, wow. Bills. I'm not probably making enough. If can I ask for a raise at work? If there's some side hustles I can do to increase my income. Now, if you do the math and a ton of your money is going to what I call cash expenses. So this is like groceries going out, hair done, nails done, everything did. Then you have a spend too much <laughs> issue. Right. Because you're making enough, but you're spending on a lot of non necessities. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't spend. But if you're spending on so much non necessities, you don't actually have enough to save, which is a necessity. Then you have to start to cut back. So identify, do I have a don't make enough issue or spend too much issue and then navigate mm. accordingly? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, another amazing human being in Newark, New Jersey, where my Howard University classmate, Roz Baraka, is the mayor there. Yes. And so I'm so pleased to hear about the amazing things you're doing there. The city is definitely on the rise. I was in Newark not too long ago. I'm from New York myself, so we are neighbors. And uh, I always love going to New York. And the, and the Devil Stadium is right there, and it is awesome. Mm -hmm. Love uh -huh. Newark. Newark on the rise. All right. Ms. Tiffany Alinche, Get Good With Money is the new book. It's on Amazon. It's easy to get. It'll be at your door in two days if you order on Amazon. But we can also go to your website, correct? Yes. GetGoodWithMoney.com. All right. Sounds good. Tiffany, thank you so much. And that's going to do it for us this evening. And we just want to wrap up with a couple of closing remarks. And we thank you so much for being here. We just want to thank our partners at Green Path for making it possible to have this dynamic and transformative discussion. And thank you all for joining us. We are excited that you've been a part of this journey with us this evening. And here's more information on how you can keep your financial journey moving forward. At GreenPath, our mission is to empower people to lead financially healthy lives. We're a national nonprofit focused on financial health for everyone. We have an incredible team here at GreenPath. Our team is courageous, they are creative, and they're really empathetic. They, they really care about what we do and they care about the people we serve. Whatever you dream about accomplishing in your life, and whatever your financial situation may be, we are always here and happy to assist you. You are not alone. We are here for you, and it all starts with a conversation.